We are back by popular demand. Uh, we're back for Tomorrow Never Dies because we are the second movie into the Pierce Brosnan Bond run. Mm. If you could leave a like, it's great. If you can't leave a like, we don't care. We don't need you. No, we do. Okay, edit that out then. <laughs> uh, originally, this was actually called Tomorrow Never Lies. Oh, yeah. Okay. Script typo. Uh, mm. So they went, oh, actually, that sounds a little bit better. Tomorrow Never Lies makes more sense. Because it's about <laughs> the manipulation of the media. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Tomorrow Never Dies doesn't make any sense. No. It should be called Tomorrow Will Definitely Die If Carver, the media magnate, Succeeds in his conspiracy to cause the British and the, the Chinese to start a war together. That's yes. his plan, unless Bond stops him. Never dies? Never dies. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I hated this. Oh, yes. I went for decades thinking that this was a movie that I didn't like. Decades? Yeah. Right. They hurried this into production. Uh -huh. Anthony Hopkins was cast as Elliot Carver, but he walked away three days in because it was really chaotic. There wasn't a completed shooting script because they had to finish the movie two years after Goldeneye uh -huh. to kind of get another one going. Uh, he actually went on to do Mask of Zorro, which was what Martin Campbell was doing at yeah, the time because right. he, he didn't want to do another one. Director of Goldeneye, yeah. That's it. And Pierce Brosnan also said this movie was like pulling teeth. Yes. So I think it's because I was so poisoned by Die Another Day. Yeah. And I just presumed that everything in between was mostly that. But this is definitely more Goldeneye than Die Another Day. This movie is okay, but you, I feel you can feel it coming apart at the seams a oh, little yeah. bit. The downhill slide from Goldeneye is starting. Well, I, I have a note here. It says, uh, James Bond, who are you talking to with your little quips? This one especially. Us. Oh, the audience from the other side of the fourth wall. Yeah. Quite early on, there's the this plane stunt. Sure. First of all, he gets into this plane yep. and he doesn't kill the co-pilot. No. He whacks him over the head with a helmet and he just leaves in there. What do you think is going to happen, Bond? You think you're going to fly <laughs> all the way to Britain and this guy's not going to wake up? Of course he's going to wake up trying to kill you with a belt or whatever. <laughs> Secondly, the chase happens and he ejects the guy into the other plane and it all blows up and he goes... Huh. Backseat driver. Who are you talking Doesn't to? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. You don't yeah. drive a plane. No, you fly a plane. You should have said backseat flyer and then turned to a second camera and gone, <laughs> like backseat driver, but different. I feel like if I'd have seen that clip alone yes. just up on YouTube, uh -huh. I would have thought that somebody spliced in a scene from Hot Shots with that <laughs> yeah, right. guy going through the bottom of a plane. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's like chicken feathers everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, also, the plane stunt right at the start of the movie, it's just Goldeneye again. It's just the yeah, opening scene. Not, but not as good. Not as good, but yeah. just more. And I think maybe yeah. that was the, the screenwriting direction. It was like, people like the Goldeneye scene. They like the plane. Where you think he's going to, you think he's going to die and then he escapes in the plane. Just do the thing again where you think he's going to die and, and then he escapes in a plane yeah. kind of thing. That's all yeah. I wanted to see. Also in that sequence, Bond is aware that there is a cruise missile that is approaching a number of nuclear bombs that could cause untold havoc in the world and he stops and he wastes precious time lighting some terrorist cigarette <laughs> before he does anything. It's for us. It is for me. <laughs> he's like, well, I could just crack this guy in the head with the butt of my rifle. Yeah. Or I could wait for him, light his cigarette. Maybe the wind will put it out. I'll have to do it again. <laughs> he's got, he gets a good look at me. Yeah, that's right. He Maybe he pulls his gun, whatever. <laughs> then you crack him with the butt of the gun so you can say, oh, smoking is a filthy habit, isn't it? You yeah. could have died. Everyone could have died, <laughs> Bond. Who are you talking to? The audience, we know. <laughs> So I remember we laughed and laughed, Mason, yes. years ago about this. We don't do that anymore, do we? <laughs> no, we, we haven't laughed since about this idea of a person manipulating the media and taking over the world with the newspapers. Mm, that's right. This is basically Rupert Murdoch. It really is now, yeah. He's sort of the amalgamation of like he's a Steve Jobs and he's a, and he's a Murdoch and he's a Kerry Packer or whoever yeah. else was alive then. But yeah, this isn't that far-fetched at this point, no, really. This was originally supposed to tie into the Hong Kong handover. Oh, yeah, yeah I got in 99. Was, that's yeah. right, I was given back to the Chinese. But they thought this is going to date the movie. Also, if something goes wrong during that event, that's not going to look good for this movie that we're putting out. That's so true. let's just avoid that at all costs. I feel like, though, this movie has aged better than I thought. I agree, yeah. Except for the kicking and punching sound effects, which are <laughs> mostly horrendous. It's, yeah, They're not correctly gauged. There's a moment in there, Bond is brought into a room by some bouncers, some That's thugs That's exactly or whatever, what I'm talking about, yeah. And there's one where... The little kick? There's a little kick, yeah. yeah. It's the noise that would make if somebody's skull gets completely caved in. <laughs> like, there's no coming back from it. It's like a wet, whack crunch. Why is he letting them beat him up for that long? Here's the, the downfall of this one, is that this Bond is in the mode of introduce yourself with your real name, yep. give the game away completely in a way that get you into a lot of trouble and then get brought into a room and get beaten up. Like he, within five minutes, he goes up to Elliot Carver and he's like, yeah, I, ba I banged your wife and also I know you've redirected all those ships and stuff. I'm a banker. And the guy's like, what, what sort of banking? I know you did crimes banking. That's <laughs> 
<laughs> straight, like straight just, away. You may as well just say you are a spy at that yeah. point because they're going to come after you regardless. Yeah. I did like how later when he escaped, they looked into him and they went, oh, look, he's got a he's got a crystal clean record. Yeah. Then he's a spy because people don't have those kind of records. I thought that was interesting where they didn't exactly figure it out straight away. Yeah. Uh-huh. But that's uh-huh. how he, you know, that's how he worked out that his wife was lying. First of all, interesting thing about the Bond women, neither of them are evil. That's true. And Which means at least one's going to die. Exactly. And of course, it's Terry Hatcher. She was pregnant during the filming of this. Ah. Uh, I thought she did a reasonably good job with a very minimal role. Yes. She has got flack for being in this, and people have talked about her as one of the worst Bond women. I don't think so. I think she does a decent job with this role, which was just turn up and slap James Bond and then a bit of banter, and then yeah. you, you get shot or whatever. And also... Poisoned. Why you wouldn't turn it down? I feel like no, definitely yeah. not. That being said, I really liked Michelle Yeoh in this. Mm. Uh, she did a lot of her own stunts. She couldn't do all of them because of insurance reasons. But yep. the things like the escape that she makes when James Bond is getting shot at, and she's just walking down the wall, and he's yeah. like, Aww. "Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's good." If if any character from the Brosnan and Bonds should have gotten their own spinoff, it would have been uh, Wei Ling. Well, funny you should mention that because there is that talk of you know Jinx was going to get her own spinoff, but yes. there was mention or at least there was in the IMDb trivia and Wikipedias and such, that she was going to get a spinoff. Mm. And I think she definitely could have carried a franchise. Agreed. And still could. I love the dumb torture guy. Incredible. Wait, which guy are we talking about? I'm talking about the uh, the guy in the hotel room. He's from Ghost. He looks like a sad cartoon dog. Yeah, uh, that is the the late great Vincent Chiavelli. Yeah. He's been he's a, he's a sort of a terrific iconic character actor. I love that he he's so in control of the situation. He's done it a million times. Yes. And to him it's he's just going to work and he's having the banter and he's having a bit of fun with it. Then when he gets the tables turned on him, yeah. he's just he goes to water. Yes. And then you see that side of Bond, which is always there, but it's behind this sheen of kind of civility. Uh-huh. And he just goes, too bad, shoots him in the face. Yeah, I just good. think that's amazing, just yeah, getting yeah. those glimpses of Bond yeah. where this guy is an actual psychopath. Yeah. And again, he's only in one scene, but he's very memorable. And he's, you yeah. know, he's got this these moments of like, this is embarrassing. How unprofessional are these guys? They can't get into a car. I'm, I have to talk to you. I'm sorry. That being said, the other henchman, Stamper, yeah. no good. Nah, I feel. Don't like Just, him. No. He looks like he belongs in a German boy band. Yeah, he looks like some, hair. Yeah, exactly. He looks like somebody that Popeye would beat up on the way to beat up <laughs> Pluto. Pluto. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you about this. Okay. I love a Bond clothing report. Oh, I'm ready. And okay. look, we could get into the specifics all day, every okay. day. So what do you think of the look of Commander Bond? Oh, Very yes. rarely we get him we do, in, his, in his naval outfit. Yes. I love it. Where are you? I think it's very snappy. I think it's a nice, you know, it's a nice change. All these little gold buttons in his hat. (laughs) It's It's rare to see a hatted Bond. It was very common, I feel, in the Roger Moore days, but less so. Because he has that background, but I think this might be the last time we've had that in these movies. I think so, yeah. Yeah, Daniel Craig certainly hasn't done it. No. His background was drowning men in sinks. (laughs) That's true. I don't think he was in the Navy. I think that's just what he did. That was his job full time. (laughs) He just hung around on a Navy destroyer. (laughs) Like he just scuttled around in it at night and he just strangled sailors. (laughs) So he was like an urban man. Yeah. (laughs) But they eventually made him an honorary commander. Like, if you leave, we'll give you some medals. And he's like, okay. (laughs) Uh, Jerry Butler appearance. I don't know if you noticed. I did not notice that. Yeah. Uh, So apparently he turned down Casino Road Royale for fear of typecasting. That was on IMDb. Oh, I, see. I don't know whether I, I believe don't know if that's that. That's true. I also want to say that I love that car. I mean, the car's fine. The BMW 750, whatever it is. Yeah, it's not a. What's interesting about this is that it's got a pretty solid car chase with very unmemorable cars, just like just, <laughs> just standard, a grey BMW, just standard issue like European sedans. Yeah. So it's got a GPS tracking system. Which oh at the my time, god, this movie mind bending. Oh my god, I'm, the GPS must have been in the news. We got an explanation early on about what a GPS is. <laughs> yep. The whole whole drama is around GPS. The British ship goes into Chinese territorial waters sure. and then it gets blown up. The commanders are like, there's no way this could have gone out of sync because it's the GPS system. <laughs> These days you'd be like, hey Steve, can you switch it off and on again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's out of sync. Okay, cool. We'll leave. We'll leave. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, because that happens with technology. A lot of the yeah, time it exactly. just doesn't work. Almost constantly. Sorry, you were saying about the car chase. Well, I like the idea that he's got the little trackpad. Yeah. I like the phone. I want to get to the phone. Uh-huh. But I think that's a really cool invention for the time. Yes. I think you see that now and you're like, who cares? because of drones and whatever. For sure, yeah. I also think the cutting tool on the front of the car is way too specific. Oh, it's and so it, specific. And at the exact height of that but cable. But that, that's a James Bond gadget. Yeah. It's like, well, I've got to put all this repelling line in your belt buckle. Yeah. And he's like, oh no, there's 75 feet to the ground. <laughs> Here we go. Also, I, in, I enjoy the car chase and it's fun. And I enjoy the fact there's a lot of like reaction shots of Bond just in the back seat, just having, Go, a, just having a grand time just, <laughs> just playing on this thing. But also, when you think about it, the entire action sequence hinges on Bond 
not being able to open the front window of the car. Because <laughs> right. he can open the rear window and leap into the back. But if he could leap into the front, probably Would save have been a lot a problem. of time. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. I love also the idea that it's mostly bulletproof and they're hitting it with sledgehammers. It's not a great looking car, mm-hmm. but what they've done with it, I really yes, like. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I also like the phone. Yeah. It's not like a modern smartphone mm-hmm. where it's just got a scanner for everything. You know, it hacks every door. It's got like a very specific thumb scanner and a little key element to it yep. and it's a taser I just think that's a great little gadget I agree. which is also implemented in the video game look I just want to talk budget and product placement but we'll talk about that after we play the amazing game anyway, let's do it Black Ops Entertainment this is this is hot stuff <laughs> I mean Bond technically isn't Black Ops though is he he's part of MI6 was he's he ever part, part of, of Black Ops I don't think so I, I think I think Bond was a thing before Black Ops were a thing okay you know if anything, he'd be more beige ops. That's probably true. What's the most British colour? <laughs> so the reason they got this, and we talked briefly about this when we talked about GoldenEye, is because after GoldenEye, the Bond property was hot, hot, hot stuff. Hot, hot stuff. And so there was this bidding war, and Rare lost it. So Black Ops got it, who you might know <laughs> from games like that Jurassic Park game where it's a one-on-one fighter and your dinosaurs. I don't remember that one. I <laughs> yeah. don't. Oh, look at his face. Not bad, though. I mean... I think I've just been, I've been conditioned. You have been conditioned. I mean, for a picture of a man that's been pasted onto a big cardboard <laughs> tube, yeah, it doesn't look bad. Yeah. It looks slightly better than the GoldenEye one. So one of the last games they did was like an X-Files game in like 2004. Oh, right. Yeah, and then they kind of... Now, ah, the- I've been bonded. <laughs> I'm okay though. Oh, I you got, come back to life just like two, Pac-Man. Just that's like Pac-Man. Good. And James Bond. Yeah, yeah, You ever yeah. seen James Bond die? No. That's what I'm talking about. Now, this is meant to be the first level. Yes. The so, first level is meant to be an adaptation right. of the movie where he's he's trying to recover some torpedoes off a fighter yes. jet, right? And this is just before... Oh, this is how we got yet. there. Yeah, this, this is how we got, got there. there He's yeah. just running around in the in the in the wintry forest for a little bit, That's gathering right. gathering pelts for the winter. And the funny thing is, as well, yes, that this game this was better a, be funny. Well, there was a. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Desmond Llewellyn. Oh, cute. In, in one of his final performances, well, the mm. final few, he did the ad for this game before it came out in 1998, and he's playing the he's playing it or <laughs> pretending to play it, and he's like, "No, no he's playing it. He was hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got 500 hours of call in Call of Duty before." Before he passed, did you know that? I didn't know in that. In a row, that's yeah. what killed him. He should have probably spent more time with his family. But they know, were yeah. all there cheering him on, handing him Mountain <laughs> Juice. Don't even worry about it. Hello there. Yeah, so it's this ad that came out a year before, and he says this game is going to be set after the events ah, of the movie. Right. And then they kind of did some focus group testing, and people were like, but we want to play as the, 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 the movie. We don't want yeah, to play, right. you know? So they ended up just replicating the movie for the most part, as good as you can. <laughs> anyway, it's bad. It's not very oh, good. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. I kind of wish that... It's okay. I kind of wish Desmond Llewellyn had come out and he'd been like, uh, in this game, you're going to play as Q. <laughs> During the, the movie Tomorrow Never Dies. So it's just him slowly like walking to the Avis rent-a-car place where he gives Bond the car. He comes out with his quips and you have to like pick what level of sighing you do to all his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do shut up, oh, 007. You're just one of the worst blokes, 007. <laughs> Bring yeah. my car back for once. They <laughs> take it out of my pay. You know, I wanted to mention this actually. Yes. With Q, yes. do you think he's ever snapped and Bond comes back and he's like, well, you know, Q, I'm sorry, I wrecked your car. And he's like, again with this shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Every time, I w- can you not just for once yeah. roll my car into a ditch and explode it? You son of a bitch. You don't respect my craft. And Bond's like, like whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I thought we were just man, doing banter. I'm so, sorry. I'm so really sorry, man. It's just... Yeah, yeah, maybe. I hope so. I don't so. know. I just feel like he doesn't respect the craft. He really doesn't. Honesty, but yeah. here's the thing, though. He doesn't respect anything or anyone. He's ne- but besides the scenario we just made up, he's yeah. never suffered any consequences for just wrecking everything. Yeah, that's true. Like, every single time. They don't Q- take it out of his measly pay- no, paycheck. No, Hugh sends him out with, like, a brand new BMW Watch or whatever explosion. it is. this explosion. Ready? I'm ready. Not seen one yet. Oh, Ooh. oh, look at those polygons fly off into the into Got a the bit sunset. real then for you, didn't it? It got very real. <laughs> but like, but he, you know, Q sends him out with his brand new car every time. Yeah, sure. And then every time he brings it back is just like a burning chassis. <laughs> that, he, or if he brings yeah, it back. Yeah, I mean, usually, oftentimes he just dumps it into a river. <laughs> like he just, he pushes a button and the skis come out of the side and he rocket boosts it into a river or whatever. But it's like, Q, if you don't want him to do that, don't build it in. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I mean? Put a speed limiter in that makes it, you can't go any faster than 40 miles an hour you know yeah give it a gps that yells at him <laughs> exactly and make it a woman because you know that's what he responds that's, that's to. the only thing he responds to yeah i mean you know what this game does right 
There's like an arsenal of weapons. Uh-huh, You've yeah, got yeah. your little gadgety gadgets and whatever, all of mm-hmm. those things. It's just, it's just doesn't really all fit together. And they clearly went, we're not going to ape the Nintendo 64 game. We're going to do our own thing. Yeah, right, right. We're going to bring Bond into the third person. This is also the first EA game that they did. They had the license for a while. Oh, I see. So, but it just, it, it was in those days of third person games that they hadn't worked it out yet. Oh, no. Yeah. But if you go to, and we've done a video on it, Everything or Nothing, yes. a much I remember that one, game. yeah. And also the same company, EA, though not Black Ops, because they the were obviously developer, working yeah. on the, the X-Files game yes. for obvious reasons. All right, so I need to call in an airstrike. You ready for oh, this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, cool. What would you think of that? That was not bad. Yeah, that's not... It's very, very quick and timely. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I know. You don't want to be sitting around That's that British punctuality you're famous for. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready for the ski escape? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm strapping the skis to your your feet as we speak. Here we go. One of the worst sections Oh, you know what? I like that lens flare, though. That's fun. Yeah? That's good. I kind of find it... I find it kind of irritating. Oh, no! Villains! Oh. Villains afoot! Get away from... Get away! Get out of it! Get out of it! Get out! Oh! Get out of Good it. Good recovery, get, Bond. Get out. Oh. This doesn't happen in Tomorrow Never Dies. This is before Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh, yeah, this it is, is too. the prequel. Right. I'm going to have yeah, to yeah. speed it up a bit if I'm going to get away from these muppets. Yeah. So there are driving missions on this game. They try to mix it up a bit. Yeah, right. Also, in the uh, in the trailer for this yes. and some of the screenshots before it came out, there's a scuba level oh. which never made the cut. Oh, well, I mean, that is for the best. Ultimately. I absolutely I don't, believe that. To you know, be I don't know. You what, don't know much. I don't know much. But do I you know do, big jumps? I know I'm aware of big jumps. Good. I didn't believe in it until just just there. Now I do, but I I know one thing that's the water level of any video game is yes. always the worst it's always level. Always death. So, yeah. So you don't want that. Do you think at the end of this you're going to be attacked by the ski free monster, the <laughs> abominable snowman? <laughs> There's no way to get past this. That's how they, they banked on. They didn't finish the game. Wow, you died. Splay. You absolutely died ski free style. Then. Check this out. What? Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that's. That's one thing that Brosnan and Bond never did. Be British enough? Be British enough. Opened up a, a, a big Union Jack parachute and then just, just ate a tin of baked beans <laughs> on the way down. So this is the movie This is now. the movie. Okay, great. Yeah, and great. you're going to... There's, <laughs> there's a fighter jet. There's a shootout. Look at this already. That's looking pretty accurate to the movie. <laughs> what I love about this, the, the Union Jack uh, parachute is, yes. he's a spy, like yes. he's a covert operative. Yes. And then they're like, who is this guy? Oh, he's British. You know, it's one of those things that yeah, you're yeah. giving away, aren't you? Like you, like, you think you put something else on there, that you put, like, a Russian okay, flag. Okay, but here's the thing. Think about this, though. Pierce yeah. Brosnan, Welsh. No, he's uh, he's Irish. Okay. <laughs> well, he's fooled even me. <laughs> he's crafty, you got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the voice actor for this does a fairly decent Pierce Brosnan. He does a great buy me a pint. Of course he does. Which I know you'd appreciate. <laughs> oh, buy me a pint. Oh, you're you you taking photos. Yeah, that's right. Probably on your Sony Ericsson. Yeah. If you love gadgets, Mason. I do love gadgets. Is he going to bring out a gadget? Sort of. Okay. supposed to stick on there because... And I had to look this up. Is this what you're supposed to be blowing yes, up? Yes, because there's something behind here. Oh. How would anybody know this? Oh, that's a secret. There is, no, it's part of the mission. Oh, you have I have to, to photograph something behind there. Oh. Yeah. Do you think that'll draw any attention? Nah, we'll be fine. Yeah, I think it's, so too. And also, I've got this very quiet machine gun. <laughs> Great. <laughs> These guys suspect nothing. <laughs> Did you see that, Mason? Yeah, you murdered them. Yeah, it's good. Fine, you've got new instructions to die in a nuclear explosion. <laughs> because in many ways, you're a disposable piece of equipment and we're done with you. <laughs> we'll just bring on a new guy who's younger. That's fine. Fresher and sexier. A little bit shorter, a little bit blonder. Mm-hmm. But I think you're going to like him. Yeah. You won't meet him because you'll be <laughs> dead. But I think you're going to like him. Yes, great, 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 great. Not a bad piece, Brosnan, right? We get it, Brosnan. You've tied your b- belt really tight to give yourself the illusion of a waistline. <laughs> we get it. Watch him put away nothing. Boop, boop, boop. Oh my got God. like the Zoolander wow. <laughs> yeah. So you got to kill everybody here and then get the plane out of here, Mason. Okay. That's the only way we're going to succeed in this mission. This is incredible. I know. And you didn't think I was good at this game. I never said anything at <laughs> yeah, all, actually, regardless. You've been, you've been quiet. You've been pretty quiet on the matter. I've been, if anything, <laughs> I've been somewhat supportive <laughs> of just all your endeavours generally. That's true. Yeah. You didn't want to do a podcast, but you didn't say anything. <laughs> That's right. And look, you look just at went along look with at it. look at us now. <laughs> just a couple of rad dudes. That's right. All right. One of these guys has a key card. Which one? To start the plane. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my god. This Get is... ready for this incredible takeoff, Mason. You're gonna love okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Can you potentially just crash into? I'm gonna spoil this for you. You can't potentially do anything. This is the extent of the things that I, it's it's turning, oh, by, it's turning itself, by itself. Okay, and cool. I'm firing the missiles yeah, or nice. machine guns, whatever that's this is supposed to cool. be. That's very cool. That's very. And that's very, it. That's very cinematic. That's like watching a movie. You can't affect <laughs> you can, materially. You can't affect the plot of of a movie, 
either. So I'm not none of this. Nice. None of this is me. You're not changing the. Uh, I'm not even in the plane. You're not even flying the plane. <laughs> you're just spinning it. You're just doing doughies. Anyway, so that's this game. It's not very good. So it just cuts to footage. Oh, oh nice FMV. Yeah, I know, right? So look, if you want us to play the game for the next movie next week, this was not worth me <laughs> trying to get this piece of shit to work. Is there even a game for the next? Oh one? yeah, there is. It's YEA again. Yes, but. It's modelled more off Goldeneye. And people say that in some ways it's better. And I've never played it, so I'm going to give it a go this week okay. and come back next week I'm and talk guess, about it. I'm going to guess it's worse. What a game, what an era. You got any notes, Mason? <laughs> oh my God, just miscellaneous notes that I didn't quite it's get to. It's my favourite thing. That we didn't, aw- didn't awkwardly shoehorn into the first part of the video. Okay, I've written here, does Elliot Carver do a little speech every time he's on a video chat because it seems exhausting for everyone? He always ends with, there's no news. Like, like bad, bad news. And everybody's like, ugh. This fucking guy every this day guy. with his shit. <laughs> uh, here's a question I have for you. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the viewers. Sure, uh, throw it out there. Is Bond allowed to do crimes while on a mission? Like, he's got a license to kill. Yes. But does that expand to just any kind of crime? Because in this, he breaks into, like, the printers. Yeah. He's just breaking and entering. Not wearing any gloves. He's getting these... Finger, he's dirty had to melt it off. He's just getting them. He's looking through all the drawers. So surely yeah. you could just get him arrested, like after that. Well, isn't it if you get captured yeah, right. as a MI6 agent, yep. they're like, we don't know him. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, so That's... I think you can do whatever you want <laughs> right. as long as you don't get captured. Uh, no. I've got here, surely not everyone at the printers is getting paid enough to fist fight James Bond. No, absolutely Because not. everybody gets into it. Like the, <laughs> g- the guys with guns, sure, and like the security guards and stuff, but there looks like just like an NBC page yeah. just in a blazer comes out and just leaves. Leaps on a bond and starts tackling him. But if you work, if you're working with mates and a lunatic runs oh, in, you jump in, just touching all the stuff. Because otherwise, you, you wouldn't be part yeah. of the story. Exactly. Like afterwards, they'd be like, "Hey, hey Terry, you bloody tackled that guy," and you'd be like, oh, "Terry, no tackle over yeah, here." Yeah, Terry, Terry, no tackle. Yeah. But at one point, speaking of Bond's quips to no one, Bond says, "Huh." They'll print anything these days. Right after he's thrown a man into a printing <laughs> press and just minced him. What he should have said was, they'll print anything these days, including using ink, which is actually <laughs> the remains of a human corpse. <laughs> Don't use your phone while driving, Bond. Well, he had to. No, he just takes oh, a phone call. Oh, I thought you meant call. when he's using the... No, he just takes a phone call. I noticed the little things, James. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Don't do it. I've also written he's, he's done an awful parking job. He's Doesn't outside care. of the line. He's doing I'm, crimes. I'm well aware. He's doing I'm, crimes, You don't have to use all these. <laughs> I've also written here, what does Bond have against Avis Rent-A-Car? I don't think he did it on purpose. No, he absolutely, he <laughs> launches it off the roof of a parking structure over a crowd of innocent people and then through the Avis Rent-A-Car storefront and then he's like, yes. Oh, oh so not the fact that he did it, yes. but the fact that afterwards he was like, I did it. I, really I did, did it, it yeah. yeah. He could have killed 20 people. Yeah, he probably did. Mm. But again, license to kill. Doesn't that's, matter, does yeah, it? Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Okay, I've got a couple more notes. Uh, again, Bond's terrible quips. And this is this is a testament to the downward uh, slope of these movies. Sure. At one point he says to Waylon, we seem to have developed a certain attachment to each other. And then he lifts his hand to show that they're handcuffed together. Did she, she not say it? That's for she us, knows. though. That's she, for us. she knows. She that's knows. That's for us. No, no. Oh, that's God. for us, man. That's fine. <laughs> After the, the motorcycle chase, which, what do you reckon about that? You enjoy it's it? It's good. Apparently the director told them that each one of them was driving. So that's why they have that little interaction. Oh, which that's is fun. fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, afterwards, Bond says to Waylon, you were pretty good with that hook, you know, because they hook the helicopter. That's and good. she says, it comes with growing up in a rough neighbourhood. Does it? You're doing that every day, <laughs> yeah, are you? Yeah. You're hooking a helicopter. It when comes with it. That's how you get to school. <laughs> Just, let's see. Uh, and here's one more, last one. If Bond's plan is to destroy the stealth ship or damage it enough that it becomes visible to radar and then the Navy can destroy it, sure. why do you have to go into it? <laughs> Blow it up. Get on your little, your little, your little dinky little ship. Is he just... mounting a rescue of sorts? No. Yeah, you're it's all right. bad guys. It's exclusively bad guys yeah, on that yeah, ship. Yeah. And they're the worst of the worst because they know all these evil plans. And they're the media. Ugh. Yeah, yeah that's right. So just stay on your little ship, shoot it with a bazooka. Yeah, is all I'm you're saying. right. Yeah, terrific stuff. Did you know this is the first movie in film history to have its entire budget be covered? By product placement. That makes a lot of sense. So it's around $100 million, a bit over. The budget for this is about $50 million more than GoldenEye, uh-huh. and it made $339 million, which is slightly less. Possibly hurt because it opened the same week as Titanic. That'll do it. Yeah, so yeah. that'll definitely do it. But I feel like you don't get the sense that this is more expensive than the last one. I don't think it looks better. I don't think yep. it, the whole thing runs as smooth as the last one. It doesn't feel bigger than the last one. I guess the last one also did a lot of miniatures that this one doesn't seem to That's do. That's true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which we didn't really talk about last week. Okay, but, but it does have a scene where Bond and Waylin like rappel down the side of a building through Jonathan Price's face. Incredible. So that's, that's a lot of money. Why didn't he do a quip then? 
We tore this guy's face right down the middle of his face. <laughs> Wish I could do that to his real face because he's a bad guy. <laughs> so I just want to come back to because I want to check in on this every week. Yep. It's said that this is the only Brosnan James Bond film where it doesn't end with him lying on top of a woman and in this, lying on top of a woman. There you go. Wow. So we're going to come back next week, obviously. But I mean, he's, they're in the water though. That doesn't count. Still counts, Mason. My, my, my favourite bit of the, about that is he's like, let's stay undercover. And then the ship, the rescue ship leaves. <laughs> Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. You're going to drown. Why isn't she like, no. no. Yeah. This is like Titanic, that movie I just saw. (laughs) We're going to die out here, Bond. (laughs) I think this is all right. I think this is all right too, yeah. It's shocking to me that I'm saying that, but there were moments when I'm like, I'm genuinely invested in this. But I think you're right. I think that the the next couple have really coloured our memories of this. Because in retrospect, I do remember enjoying this at the cinema. Okay. Because it had, it had it gets got all everything you want. It's got the gals. It's got the guns. It's got the gadgets. Mm, three Gs. The three Gs you need. That's yeah, right. That's terrific. So look, we will be coming back next week for you only you only uh, you, you can't feel any pain because you got a bullet in your head. That oh one. yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. that one again? <laughs> the world is not enough. Yes. I feel like this should have been called The World Is Not Enough. Right? Because he wants more than what he's currently got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. And the reason we are doing this is because it got voted on Patreon. So we're running polls there all the time. If you want to chuck in a buck, we'd really appreciate Please do. that. We'd very so, appreciate it. I know, I know times are tough. Yeah. But give us money. Yeah. Give us your money. Times are tough for us too, and we want your That's money. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. You, obviously, you don't have to. And we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet. It comes out all the time every Monday. Check it out. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Is this a good Bond film? Tell yeah, us. it's good. Yeah, all right. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm telling the listeners and viewers. Terrific and great. Okay, goodbye. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah.